What's going on guys? So welcome back to Advanced Training Techniques. Last week we jumped into some topics covering hand position when doing curls to target the biceps versus the brachialis versus the brachioradialis. And the one thing that we didn't cover was how to target the long head of the biceps versus the short head of the biceps. So what does that mean? Well, if you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna flex your arms like this and I'm facing you, what you see on the inside is the short head of the bicep. So if you feel like you don't have enough development on the inside, that's the short head. If we were to turn around and go this way, if you feel like you're lacking development on the outside or peak there, that's the long head. So today, that's what we're gonna be covering is some specific exercises for both the short head and the long head. We've covered the specifics of why you wanna do these different exercises in the past with bones. And I'm gonna go ahead and link those videos at the end of this video. So we don't need to go back in and regurgitate all that information again. So check out those videos at the end if you have questions. Today we're gonna to focus on the specific exercises, give you a little bit of variation, add to your arsenal of exercises so you don't get bored feeling like you're doing the same exercise over and over. So these are some of my favorite biceps exercises. So I'm gonna slide bones out of the way here. He's just gonna hang loose, spot me today, and we're gonna jump right into it. So we're gonna start with targeting the short head of the biceps and doing different exercises. So now if you check out those videos later, what you're gonna see in those videos is I talk about in order to target the short head of the biceps, we wanna get our arms out in front of us. So really two different arm positions. One is with our elbows, our arms in front of us, and the other is with our elbows behind our body. So elbows in front, targeting the short head of the biceps, elbows behind us, targeting the long head of the biceps. And again, the reason for that is in those other videos, so you'll check those out. But right now, we're gonna give you some different variation. The first one, some people call it by different names. I like to go ahead and call them spider curls. You can do these with a bar, or you can do them with a dumbbell. I prefer to use a dumbbell because with a bar, I'm locked into a fixed position. I can't move my hands at all. And with these, I like to bring my arms out just to the side a little bit, and that, I feel, helps me target the short head of the biceps, and actually the reason for that is in those other videos, so you'll wanna check that out. So let me grab both dumbbells here. You're gonna get the bench on about a 45 degree angle. You don't need to slide down. You can stay standing up just where your chest is right on the edge of the bench. And now you can see that my elbow is out in front of me. What we wanna do here, keep our elbow in a fixed position and curl up. Now just like we talked about last week, notice that little curl at the end where I'm bringing my pinkies nice and high? That's supination. And that's gonna help you really target the biceps. Anytime you're targeting the biceps over the brachialis, you wanna focus on supinating your hands. In other words, getting that pinky nice and high. So it's gonna look just like this. <clears throat> there we go. Whew. So that's exercise number one. That's a spider curl for targeting the short head of the biceps. Now, the other exercise is similar to the spider curl, but this is in a prone position, meaning lying down. Same thing, we can use dumbbells or we can use a bar. I'm gonna go ahead just for the sake of some variety, I'll show you what it looks like with a bar, so we'll slide these dumbbells out of the way. Now this might be Actually a little heavy because in this position, you're gonna be weaker than you would be in a standing position here. So you're gonna do the same thing, light on the bench here. Now it's nice if you have a taller bench. The taller the bench, the better, and you can see why. It's because here my arms are touching the ground. Just for the sake of cheating a, a little bit, I'm gonna bring the bench up 
just a hair. So it's very similar to what we would be doing with the incline, except a different angle. So this is bringing our arms even more in front of us. So if I were standing, if I was on the 40 to five degree angle, it would look like this. This puts it more here, arm almost perpendicular to the body. So even though I put this at an angle, I can still cheat it by leaning over a little bit. And you can see my arm is almost perpendicular to my body here. I'm gonna go with a wider grip here. The bar has got a, a curve in it. I'm actually going to go ahead and slide my hand into a neutral position here, right in the middle of the curve versus having my thumb high. So my pinky is almost sitting right in that bend. All right. Now, if you've ever done skull crushers, this is almost the exact opposite of a skull crusher. If you're laying on your back and you're doing triceps, you're bringing that bar right to your forehead. This is the same thing. We're bringing the bar right to our forehead. Now you notice when I was going down, my arms weren't straight. Two reasons to that. One is safety. With your, whoa, almost fell off the bench. With your arms straight, it's really easy to tear your biceps. A lot of people tear their biceps not even doing biceps, they tear their biceps doing deadlifts. So when your arm's in a straight position like that, it puts your tendon attachment in a, in a weak position, so we wanna be careful. So I never fully straighten my arms when doing biceps, so that's number one, safety. Number two is constant tension. By stopping short, I'm keeping the tension on the muscle the whole time, it's making that entire set that much harder. So serves two purposes. One, safety, and two, it intensifies the workout. So that's exercise number two. Both of these we did with the bench. The third one, we've got to go over to the cable machine, and I'm going to show you a different variation. All right, so I told you that we were going to be doing a cable machine. That was a half truth. This is a cable machine, but this is actually a lap pull-down machine. And this is one of my favorite exercises. You don't see a lot of people do these. And the reason I like this one is it attacks your arms from a totally different angle. So our first exercise on the bench at 45 degree angle, it looked like this. The second one, we were more perpendicular to our body and this one takes our arms a little bit higher. So you're gonna drop the weight down, obviously a whole lot lighter than you would if you were doing lat pull downs. You're gonna sit on the bench just like you were gonna do lat pull downs. Now I could keep my arms close together but since I told you that I like to take a little bit wider grip and I feel that helps target the short head of the biceps a little bit better, I'm gonna go with a slightly wider grip, take a seat, and then I lean back just a little bit, keep my elbows in a fixed position, and I'm gonna bring it right to the tip of my nose. All right, so there's three exercises right there where we're putting our arms out in front of our body. Now the typical exercise that you see most people do is on a preacher curl or a preacher bench. Now the nice thing about that is you're able to rest your arm in it and it helps you keep your elbow in a fixed position so you're not gonna move it. With these three exercises, you have to be a little bit more disciplined and you have to focus on keeping that elbow in one spot because you don't have anything to rest it on. So, whether you're doing the 45 degree angle spider curl or in a prone position or here in the seated position on the lap pull down, make sure that you really focus on just keeping that elbow in one spot. So that's our three exercises for focusing on the short head of the biceps. Now we're gonna move back over to the bench and I'm gonna show you three different exercises for targeting the long head of the biceps or that outer peak. All right, so we're back at our bench. I've raised it up a little bit steeper. So before we had it 45 degrees, now it's a little bit steeper, and this is gonna be the first exercise that we do. Now, we're doing the exact opposite of what we were doing for the short head of the biceps where we're putting our elbows in front of our torso. Now we wanna put our elbows behind our torso. When they're in front, we have the option of using dumbbells or a bar, but when our elbow Elbows. Elbows are behind us. We have to stick to dumbbells or cables 
because the bar is going to hit our torso. <clears throat> so pick up a pair of dumbbells, going to lean back and you can see if I relax my arms and let them hang here, it automatically puts my elbows behind my body. What we're going to do here, you could do these one arm at a time or you could do them two arms at a time, but no matter which way you do it, you want to focus on supinating your hand just like all other exercises, meaning turning your pinkies up at the top of the range of motion. It's so like we talked about before, don't fully straighten them at the bottom. You can stop just short, keep that constant tension, avoid injury, and turn that pinky up at the top. Maximum supination, that really helps us target the biceps. Ah. Now you notice as I go down, I'm letting my hand fall into a neutral position, so I'm not keeping it supinated the whole time. So as I go down, falling into a neutral position, and then supinate or turn the pinkies up as I come towards the top. So that's exercise number one. Now this is kind of the mere opposite of what we did before. We're going to stay here and I'm going to go ahead and lower this bench almost to flat. I could do it at flat but it makes it a little bit harder again because the bench isn't that far off the ground. So I'm going to bring it one click up and we're going to do the same thing. There's a bit of a difference here. I'm going to show you what that is. Before, as I lean back, I just naturally let my arms hang. But as you can see here, even with the bench slightly up, I can still hit the ground. What we're going to do is we're going to bring our arms forward just slightly. Now that does engage our delts a little bit, but it also engages our biceps. Our biceps help hold our arm in front of us. So by bringing them forward just a little bit, you're keeping constant tension on the muscle. So by holding them in front of us at the bottom of the range of motion, you're making this exercise extremely difficult. So there's no rest here. Total constant tension throughout the entire movement. So it's going to look like this. Get that supination. Stop short. Bring it back. Whew. So even though that was the exact same weight we used before, that was a whole lot harder. Harder, I'm having a hard time talking today. It was a whole lot harder at the bottom because I'm having to keep my arms forward and keeping that constant tension. So that's exercise number two, targeting the outer head or the long head of the biceps. The last one I'm going to show you here is on the cable machine. And yes, it's really on the cable machine. Okay, so we're going to be doing our third and final exercise. So we're on the cable machine. I've connected the handle to the low pulley, just like our other exercises, getting our arm behind us. I go ahead and the leg that's on the same side as the arm I'm working is my lead leg, so I put that in front of me. Otherwise, I start to twist my torso, and I want to keep my torso nice and perpendicular. So arm behind me, elbow in a fixed position, supinate that hand, Squeeze it and bring it back. This is going to look just like this. All right, so you're going to do one side and then you're going to turn around and you're going to do the other side. Obviously with cables, you have to do them independently. Whereas with the dumbbells, a lot of times you can do things with two arms at the same time, which I like to do because it saves time. All right, so there's three exercises for the short head of the biceps, three exercises for the long head of the biceps. Now hopefully this kind of sparks your imagination and you can figure out some different exercises. Give them a try. Either you feel it or you don't feel it, but there's no harm in trying different things and that's what makes working out fun is trying different things and adding variety to your workout. So, Three exercises for the short head of your biceps, three exercises for the long head of the biceps, and that's it for today. Make sure you check out these two videos right here. One is on the short head of the biceps, and the other is on training the long head of the biceps, and that's going to give you more of the technical information of why these exercises work.
get into the details of muscle attachment, et cetera, and they're definitely worth checking out. It'll make all of this really click in your head and help you develop that mind-muscle connection. So that's it for now. Come back next week. We're gonna be jumping into a new topic, new muscle groups, and new exercises, things to give you guys variety and help you build bigger and stronger muscles. So I'll see you guys next week.